This was the world's greatest arena. I think I threw up twice before the show. Paul was climbing the walls. You could cut the energy with a knife. Bill was trying to keep people away from our dressing rooms. He was a nervous wreck, too. Part of the reason we were nervous was that the sound sucked at the garden. We were disappointed at sound check because the room was so dead. It wasn't made for concerts you either get nothing back, or the sound bounced off that back wall and came right back at you. And the Teamsters were a nightmare. My group hated them. You couldn't even take a head up on that stage, they had to carry it up for you. My drum tech told me that it was taking them hours to set up because they carry one symbol at a time. Who's going to tell the Teamsters what the fuck to do? No. Before the show, I put one single red rose in each of the other guys' rooms, from me to them. The note said, let's have a great show. I love you, Peter. Right before we put on our makeup, I went to see Gene. We're going out to play the garden. I said, son of a bitch, man, you said it so many times. He chuckled. When I got up behind the drums, I scanned the audience and I found my folks. We started to play and tears were streaming down my mom's face. Even my dad was all teared up. This was the one thing that I wanted more than anything else in the world to be on that stage and see my mom and dad watch me play. I started bawling and my makeup started to run down the sides of my face. It's funny, no matter what age you reach, you're always still trying to please your parents. We never had money, but they let me pursue my dream. This was something I could give back to them, to make them feel that all that sacrifice was worth it. My mother was always so proud of me. She would actually go up to Jean after a show and say, son leaves the band, there will be no band. He makes the band great. Without a great drum, there's no great band. Gene would say, I guess you're right, MRS. Chris Kimola, but he looked like he wanted to choke. But Bill would always take it up for her. You are absolutely right, MRS. Chris Kimola, he'd tell her. Your son is the heartbeat of the band. Then he'd give her a hug. Three days after the garden show, we came back down to reality. We were finishing our show at the Nassau Coliseum on Long Island when it was time for me to levitate. By then we were using a scissors lift to get me up. Those things were not balanced, so sure enough the platform tilted to the left and half of my drums were hanging off it. We just played the garden. And now we look like idiots. I fumed afterward. I was pissed. That night I went to Ashley's to chill and I hung out with Boss Gags until closing time. I got home at daybreak, drunk and wired, and I wanted to have sex with Lydia but she refused. So I grabbed the keys and stormed out of the house and went to the garage down the street where I kept my Camaro. The attendant brought me my car and then turned around to take
not told Bill. Bill promised him lifetime passes to any kids show. I had to go to the hospital, so Bill called Lydia and asked her to clean out the car while we went to Bellevue. By the time Lydia arrived at the hospital, I was lying on a gurney in the hallway with two black eyes and a busted nose. They put a bandage on my broken nose and sent me home with a big bottle of Percodent. I had never taken Percodent before, but they were a revelation. A couple of them with champagne was a killer fun. But I'm getting ahead of myself. It took Belushi to introduce me to the pleasures of Percodent. I was back at the brownstone, healing in bed, when John came over to visit. How are you feeling, Peter? He said softly. Johnny, I can't breathe. I'm fucked up, I said. He was anxious to hear the blow, but, blow. He found with the accident, and as I related it to him, his eyes wandered to my nightstand. So what did the doctor give you? He asked. I don't know what they're called. Some pills for the pain. He picked up the bottle. Wow, forget it. His eyes lit up. These fucking things are dynamite. Do you mind? No, take what you want. I didn't even finish the sentence and John had emptied the rest of the bottle into his mouth. That y'all got to drink. He mumbled. I motioned toward the bar and he grabbed a bottle of tequila and guzzled it down with those pills. In seconds he was flying on top of the bus he had when he came over. After a few minutes, John said he had to leave to meet Dad. John, you're really fucked up, I said. Why don't you hang out a little longer, and I'll get out of bed and we'll watch a little TV. Mom, stay in bed, I'll be fine. We said good, I had watched him stumble out of the room. But he couldn't deal with our spiral staircase. Seconds later, we heard, boom, 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 boom. I jumped out of bed. Lydia yelled down the stairs, are you alright, John? Yeah, I'm fine, he mumbled back. Then we heard the front door slam and we could hear him screaming for a cab in the street. If Belushi likes these things so much, they must be cool, I thought as I went back to bed. The next day I called my doctor and got the prescription refilled. Before I knew it, I was addicted to them. KK 
KK is picketing us. I was being a little dramatic, but that's me. What's he talking about? I heard my dad ask in the background. My mother made me promise that I'd call her first thing in the morning and let her know I was okay. We managed to leave town intact, but there was one irony. During our show that night, a bunch of girls showed up in leather masks and dominatrix, a style bondage gear, and while we were playing, 